Okay, so as well as habits, Christmas is also a time for gifts. And so one gift I would like to share mm. is a practice that um, I, I would like to practice more ass assiduously. <laughs> and it's this practice of uh, it's it came to me a few years ago, I was working in the city of the golden capital of Bohemia. Do you know the golden capital of Bohemia? <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the golden capital of Bohemia is Prague. So in the Czech Republic, Bohemia is one of the regions and Prague is the capital of Bohemia. Now Prague is also a, a little bit of a mythical place, yeah? It's a a place of great layers of history and mythology and all sorts of things. But the Czech name, Praha, is a very special word. So in English we say Prague, in German they say Prague with just four letters, P-R-A-G. But in Czech it's Praha. In Greek it's Praha. And Praha means the threshold or the junction point. So we just had a junction point at the solstice, but we're about to have one in about three hours time. There are always junction points. They're happening all the time, yeah? And Praha means junction point. <coughs> junction point is yoga. Yoga is the place where, as we've already said, where the seeming pairs of opposites join and they can draw out each other's complementary potential. So yoga happens in the junction, the place where those different streams meet and become a mutually complementary greater whole. And so Prague, historically, was this meeting place with wisdom from different directions. And there are many beautiful stories about Prague. And one of them is the story of um, Jacob. Do you know the story of Jacob in Prague? So Jacob, this is a Yiddish story, and Jacob is what is known in Yiddish as a mensch. Do you know this term, mensch? A mensch is like a down-to-earth guy, <laughs> solid guy. Jacob, he's, you know, he takes care of his family. He goes to work, he does a good job. He's a solid bloke, yeah? And then one day, Jacob, he's not, he's not a kind of, uh, you know, up in the sky guy, very down to earth. But one night, he has a very, very vivid dream. A dream so vivid that he's shaken by it, because I'm Jacob and I'm down to earth. Let's forget this crazy dream. The next night, the same dream. It's even more vivid. Jacob's just trying to push it out of his mind. The more he tries to push it out of his mind, what happens? It keeps coming back, you know, flashbacks during the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> a third night, the same dream. Every day, it's a little bit more detailed. And Jacob is, he becomes tortured by it. It goes on for a, a couple of weeks. And in this dream, Jacob sees himself walking from his home, which is in Krakow, in the land which is now known as Poland, towards the golden capital of Bohemia, Praha. And in Praha, there is waiting for him this golden treasure. It's got his name on it. It's like, it's, to, it's, it's for you, Jacob. You know, you've got to go. And, it, and he sees the place where it is kept. It's in a specific pillar, and there's a specific stone he will remove, or he'll stand on, and it will become to him this great treasure. And he knows the way, he knows the places he will be lodged, he knows the kindly couple who will take him in and feed him when he is destitute. Every detail of the way is laid out, and Jacob is... And his wife notices that her husband, normally so just down to earth, <laughs> It is somehow something is bothering him. She says, yeah, Jacob, dear, what's the matter? I'm not sleeping so well. That's unlike you. Yes, I know. <laughs> I have a dream. 
you drank one? What is it? No, no, no. But one night is just too much. And he cannot bear it any longer. In the middle of the night, he bolts up from the bed. Don't worry, dear. I'll be back in 23 days. That's how long it's going to take. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I know the way. I've seen it all so much. And she's half asleep. What? What? Anyway, she's off before she's even kind of fully awake. And off he is on his journey. And it's just like he saw. He gets taken in here. He gets fed here. It rains there. He shelves under the tree here. And after about nine days of walking, he's into Bohemia. And then he makes his way closer and closer to the capital. Now the capital of the golden state of Bohemia where the king lives. Where does the king live? In a palace. In a castle, a palace. Now, in Jacob's dream, everything up to this point was completely there in every detail. But as he gets very, very close to the treasure spot, what does he see? Which didn't appear in the dreams, but when he sees it, he thinks, How did I let myself fall into this trap of dreaming? <laughs> of course they would be here. Who is they? Gods. Gods. <laughs> because this, this is the bridge that leads to the king's palace. So what do we have? Soldiers. A whole rank of them. Standing sentry all along the bridge. All along the way up to the castle. Jacob walks onto the bridge. The bridge containing the pillar where his treasure, according to the dream, is supposed to be contained. And standing above that very pillar is the biggest soldier of the whole battalion. It's a big beard. Everything about the soldier is big. <laughs> He's quite intimidating. And Jacob goes as close as he dares and he sits down on the bridge and he has a moment. He's a bit like Arjuna. He's feeling despair. He just what to do. I've come all this way. I can't go back now. I can't give up now. What an idiot I am. How did I let myself in? You know, he's racked by this. He finds somewhere to sleep for the night. He comes back the next day. Same guard. Just... And then the guard, after a while, walks up to him and says, I've seen you. <laughs> Oh, um, I've been guarding this way for a long time. I, 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 I know a man who's come for a reason. <laughs> so what is the reason? <laughs> you can tell me. I mean, he's a very, he's, he's, he's big and his friendliness is big as well. He's, you know, so he's not so intimidating. He says, is it a woman? <laughs> because the city of Prague. Many beautiful women here. No, 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 no. I, I'm a married man. It's not about a woman. So what is it? And Jacob feels so ashamed. He feels like, oh, I, I can't tell him. <laughs> but the guard, he has this lovely warmth to him. He says, you can tell me. I won't tell anybody else. <laughs> and Jacob feels somehow emboldened encouraged. Why not have come all this way? It's a dream. A dream! And now the soldier starts his big laugh. You come in because of a dream. I came in because of a dream too. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. I'd I, I never have taken you for a dream. You know what dream comes to me? And so then the soldier starts telling him, he says, My dream is kind of crazy. So before Jacob has a chance to even tell what his dream is, the soldier tells him. <laughs> it came to me many nights, a few years ago, but then I just gave up on it. And it's, the whole idea was I had to walk from here <laughs> to Krakow, the camp of the Poles, yeah? I had to find the house where lives one Jacob. <laughs> In, a, in the Jewish quarter, where every other house is the house of one Yaakov, <laughs> surname Levy, 
And if I find the house of Jacob Levy, I go to the hearth, yeah? And I dig up under the fire and there's this treasure. <laughs> so what was your dream? <laughs> <laughs> and Jacob says, No, I, I, I've come to the... I, I need to go home. No, it's, I, yeah, no, it, it's too much for me. I need to go home. Excuse me. And now Jacob is running across the plains and small hills back towards his home. He arrives back, it actually is 23 days. His wife, Jacob, ah. And he goes straight to the fire and it's, the fire is lit because it's now the dark time of the year. It's now the winter time and the fire is on. And Jacob, it's like he dies straight into the fire and he's like, Jacob, are you crazy? Stop worrying, says, give me that water. And he puts out the fire and he starts digging. Jacob is going to stay right back and furiously he digs in the hearth. And what does he uncover? The gold. <laughs> and the story goes, with this gold, he builds a temple. And you can go to Jacob's temple in Krakow. But I heard the story first in Prague, I think. So the idea is, where is the gold? It is in the dark. And it's in the fire of the heart. So the idea is it takes that fire of courage to go into the dark. But when we do have the courage to bring together and reconcile the divergent parts of ourselves, when we acknowledge the division and the split and being torn and say, well, okay, let's look how this has happened. And we can invite space for a new cohesion to emerge we realize we have this healing golden light that can bring everything within its radiance here. So the hearth, traditionally, was always in the center of the kitchen, in the center of the home. <laughs> so may we have the courage to be with these cycles and let this practice invite that loving presence through all the ups and downs. So the practice is, is the, Ger the Germans, they do things quite efficiently here. Yeah? So Praha is a five letter word. Prague in English is six letters, but in German they four. <laughs> P-R-A-G. And P-R-A-G is to me a lovely mutually supportive mechanism for yoga practice. So P is the power of yoga, the power of love, in other words, presence. So when we become present, what happens? We notice more. Yeah? And that invites our receptivity. So when we invite ourselves into the present, we can receive more. When we allow ourselves to be here, the here and now can offer us cures more. So as we become more receptive, a, our awareness expands. And when we're more present, more receptive and more aware, what does that invite, beginning with G? Kindness. <laughs> <laughs> gratitude, yeah. So yeah, all of these things, it, inv it invites gratitude. And when we feel gratefulness, gratitude, how else do we generally feel? Joyful. We generally feel quite good. We feel some appreciation, some joyfulness. And we recognize that Kumar, who runs the Muksha, he, one of the things he says, James, remember, your problem is smaller than you are. <laughs> but your problem exists within your awareness. So when we're in a difficult time, if we practice presence, we notice, ah, I can look at this problem, so it's not that big, I'm looking at it. I'm bigger than it. I can recast it, I can work with it. So presence, receptivity, awareness, gratitude. And we can jump on the PRAG circle at any point. You can start with gratitude. What am I grateful for today? This breath, this feeling of warm or cold, or like this sensation. Something very immediate. Or we can start with presence. No. What's really going on now? Shh, mind, shh. No, what's really going on now? And then we become more receptive, more aware invites gratitude. So, if you like, you can 
take that and practice with him.